I think the most important thing when you're designing your room is what you see most of. So it could be uh, the walls. So you see a lot of wallpaper. You see a lot of windows. So you're looking at blinds, you're looking at fabrics and you're looking at the floor because these are the big, big areas, almost the things that surround the furniture that you'll put in. I believe that it has to be the perfect blend of how it looks and how it feels. There's no point of looking at the most beautiful sofa and then you sit on it and it's not comfortable. So it has to be the happy marriage of comfort and likability. In smaller areas, I would say the most important thing is to declutter. What you don't need in the room should be banished to a cupboard or another room, which is another problem for another day. But declutter, see what has to be in the room, think of the function of the room, and then you can play about with the scale of the furniture, make sure it fits properly, make sure there's enough breathing space around the room. That's really, really important. And then you can play about with light and airy colours and mirror to reflect light back into the room. When it comes to lighting, and it's probably the most important thing to make your interior design pop, think about lighting. Overhead lighting, I'm not a fan of overhead lighting as a light source, i.e. to fill the room with light. I like overhead lighting as an architectural feature. It may have some lighting in it, so it looks as if it's attractive and sparkly, but overhead lighting should really just be there as a piece of decoration, I believe. The best way to create the best ambience in your room is lighting around this level, so where we have it now, and that's in the case of occasional lamps, bedside lamps, table lamps. It gives a lovely ambience and coziness to the room, but you can also add lighting in behind sofas, in corners, under plants, because what that does do, it creates a shadow or a lit atmosphere or a halo effect which enhances the whole room and creates the atmosphere. Darks and lights, lights and shades create the drama. I'm looking at new designs and looking for inspiration, a bit like the clothing industry and fashion, new collections are released uh, every year, sometimes twice or three times a year. So my design library is always up to date. But for me, it's more about what other people are doing. It's about keeping up with the Joneses. It's what's new, what's in, what's hot, what's not. And having a look at what everyone else is doing. World travel for me has been amazing because it's changed the way I look at interiors because the light is different, the atmosphere is different. But really, keeping my eyes open, inspiration can come from everywhere, and anywhere. Times of late, I think, have been very, very difficult, but it has changed the way in which I look at design and which you should maybe be looking at how you live at home because we need ultimate flexibility. We've all been trapped within our four walls. So we need the flexibility to maybe work from home, to do our Zoom calls, to make it look as if we've got lovely homes. But I think flexibility is key and it has definitely changed. This whole um, situation has changed the way we look at everything, but in, more in particular, definitely the way in which we live. I'd say flexibility is key. My design heroes um, have been a constant stay because even since college, when I first found out about them, and in particular, and having been to New York to see the Guggenheim Museum, um, one of my favourite architects is Frank Lloyd Wright. And the homes that he designed for himself, and in particular Falling Water, have inspired me to encase the kind of art deco, simplistic, clean, simple line living that suits me to a T. Um, then going on to keep the Art Deco vein, um, I love the design at Le Corbusier. You recognise their furniture. Um, it was a big movement at the time, but it's very cube-like with chrome sides. Um, very, very simplistic, but I love the Art Deco. Going into a little bit of Art Nouveau period, it's a time I would like to have lived Mistakes, failures, yes, I've had a few, we all have. Um, 
I would say that there's a term that joiners use, which is measure twice, cut once. And that really means double check everything before you make a final decision. It's a rule of thumb and something I try to do all the time. Try not to rush, take a pace, think about it, then make the decision. How do you know when design is good or what is good design? I would say it's not only when it looks good, but it's when it feels good. When you're in an atmosphere or an ambience, that's when it's right and you know it. My personal design philosophy, especially in business, is getting it right for the client. There's no point in me stamping my mark saying, this is how I live, this is what's in vogue, this is what you should have. It's about what you need. It's about how you want to live. So me interpreting your dreams and getting it right for you is success of my design and my design philosophy. How do you combine beauty and function? Well, first and foremost, it must function properly. It must look good, but you must be comfortable. It must work. It must function. It must do what it says on the tin. A kitchen needs to be a kitchen. There's no point in having a Ferrari if it doesn't drive and your old jalopy out in the driveway goes like a storm. Inspiration on a day-to-day -day basis, I am always on the lookout. I'm like a hawk looking for prey, but not aggressively. But even with the Amabile Home Haven group, it's been great for me because I can hover and have a look at what everyone's doing. And that combined with world travel, looking at how other people are living, really changes my perspective on design on a day-to-day -day basis. And basically, I'm just nosy. Thinking about a career in interior design, I would say, yes, there are courses you can do. And I opted to do a four year degree course, um, which was great. Um, but there's nothing to beat being out in the field and actually working with that client, not the imaginary client at college. Think about best practice, get into the industry and actually having to deliver. So even if you are going to do a course, try and get some practical experience as well, because you need to get the best practice in the best field to get the best results. The future of design, I would say, is adaptability and looking at a personal way an almost personally tailor-made version of design because we're all looking at design from different angles. Yes, the designers and the collections will still be there, but it's about how we look at how we live, sustainability, the environment, reusing, upcycling. There's so many different elements to looking forward with design. I think just keep your poppers peeped and keep ahead of the game.